So, speaking of trials and sorrows, we are in John 16, and uh, Jesus mentioned something a little bit about that, and so we're going to get into that here. I want to read John 16, and uh, just read it in its entirety, and so if you would, just go with me to John 16. It will be on the, on the board here. The board. Sorry, my teacher language is coming out. The board. I have a smart board in my class. Okay, back into <laughs> pastoral preaching mode here. Sorry. Uh, Gospel according to John. Uh, So yes, chapter 16. So the title of my message this morning is uh, Works of the Holy Spirit, Companionship, Counseling, and Commissioning. So we're going to be focusing on those three works of the Holy Spirit today that that Jesus teaches about in John 16. So I want to read John 16. This is part of Jesus's farewell teaching, his farewell discourse which is all connected with chapters 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17. It's all right here at the end of Jesus' life, right before he goes up on the cross. And so the book of John is interesting how, starting in chapter 12, really, we see the the last week of Jesus' life. So John has 21 chapters in it. Uh, John 1 through 11, a lot happens. We, We walk through all that. Then John 12 comes along, and it focuses in on just his last week of his life. And so uh, many chapters are just focused on that. And so we're in the, in the middle of that. And this is his final sayings to his disciples before he goes. And so this is a very important part of the scripture. I love John 14, 15, and 16, 17, specifically those four chapters, because if you look at it, if you have a red-letter Bible— uh, mostly it's all red letters there of Jesus' words and his teachings and, and what he has to say to his disciples. And one of the main key focuses in those chapters that Jesus teaches about is the Holy Spirit. And so I want to talk about the Holy Spirit this morning and, and focus in on it. And, and I'll jump through chapters 14, 15 as well and kind of backtrack a little bit um, to talk about what Jesus said about the Holy Spirit in those chapters as well. And so this is Jesus' final teachings and if you look at John 13, 1, it says that Jesus' uh, time has finally come, the Passover celebration, his time has come, and it says that he was about to leave the world and return to the Father. And it said that he had loved his disciples during his ministry on earth, and now he loved them to the very end, John 13 there. And so he is loving his disciples, and what a great loving way to give somebody some final instructions, final words. Of, of a man who's really dying. He's, he's dying. And so the disciples would have been very locked in on what he was saying because he's like, all right, I'm about to return to the Father, so listen up. I won't be here forever, so listen. So they were very locked in to what he was saying, and so I want us to be locked in to what Jesus is saying here in John 16. And then in John 18, if you read ahead, you would see that it says just a, a, a kind of a, a, a bookend where it says, after saying these things, Jesus crossed over and uh, went towards and got betrayed. But I just want to, that, that saying, after these things, after saying these things. So you look at John 13, where it says his time has come. John 18, after saying these things. So you see this whole collection together, just unified chapters there. So let's read John 16. You ready? John 16. I have told you these things so that you won't abandon your faith, for you will be expelled from the synagogues, and the time is coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for God. This is because they have never known the Father or me. Yes, I am telling you these things now so that when they happen, you will remember my warning. I didn't tell you earlier because I was going to be with you for a while longer. But now I am going away to the one who sent me, and not one of you is asking where I am going. Instead, you grieve because of what I've told you. But in fact, it is best for you that I go away. Because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, then I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will convict the world of its sin and of God's righteousness and of the coming judgment. The world's sin is that it refuses to believe in me. Righteousness is available because I go to the Father and you will see me no more. Judgment will come because the ruler of this world has already been judged. There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. Verse 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you what he has heard. He will tell you about the future. 
He will bring me glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you where, whatever he receives from me. Verse 16, in a little while you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that you will see me again. Some of his disciples asked each other, what does he mean when he says, in a little while you won't see me, but then you will see me and I am going to the Father? And what does he mean by a little while? We don't understand. Jesus realized they wanted to ask him about it. So he said, are you asking yourselves what I meant? I said, in a little while you won't see me, but a little while after that you will see me again. I tell you the truth, you will weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You will grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn into a wonderful joy. It will be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into the world. So you have sorrow now, but I will see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. At that time, you won't need to ask me for anything. I tell you the truth, you will ask the Father directly, and he will grant your request because you use my name. You haven't done this before. Ask using my name, and you will receive, and you will have abundant joy. I have spoken of these matters in figures of speech, but soon I will stop speaking figuratively and will tell you plainly all about the Father. Then you will ask in my name. I'm not saying I will ask the Father on your behalf. For the Father himself loves you dearly because you love me and believe that I came from God. Yes, I came from the Father into the world, and now I will leave the world and return to the Father. And here's the disciples in verse 29. They said, at last you are speaking plainly and not figuratively. Now we understand that you know everything, and there's no need to question you. From this we believe that you came from God. Jesus asked, do you finally believe? But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone because the Father is with me. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. I feel like we could just end there with just the the words of Jesus and uh, sometimes I feel kind of silly trying to explain the scriptures, but it's not me. It's, it's the Holy Spirit that will, will speak and explain the scriptures uh, to us. Um, and I'm th- so thankful for that. It's such an honor to be able to share God's word, to read it to us, to gather us together and, and become uh, just stronger believers because of the word of God. So let me pray, then we'll jump, jump into it. Lord, we thank you for your word. Thank you, Jesus, that you shared these things that you spoke with such authority and that when you speak, people listen. And so we thank you, God, that you love us and care for us so much that you teach us and instruct us and you give us understanding like you gave these disciples here. You give us understanding. We ask for that this morning. We ask for understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so in verse 1, you see Jesus And he says that he's saying these things, I'm telling you these things, so that you won't abandon your faith. And so Jesus is teaching us and teaching them this because he wants to see faithful followers of him until the very end. He knows that things aren't going to always be easy. Jesus knows this. He knows that things will get very, very difficult, and he tells them about that. He's not saying, hey, become a follower of me and Everything will be awesome, guys. Just do it, and you'll get all that you want. Everything, all your dreams will come true. No. He's saying, hey, there's going to be trials and sorrows. You ready for this? Yes. Sign us up, Jesus. But take heart. Be of good cheer, because I've overcome these things. And I'm telling you these things. I'm preparing you so that you won't abandon your faith. And here at the very beginning, the examples he gives, or not the example, but he's speaking very prophetically. He says, you will be expelled from the synagogues, and there will be a time coming when those who kill you will think they are doing a holy service for God. Does that sound like anybody in the Bible that we'll read about after Jesus' resurrection and after his ascension? Is there somebody in the scriptures that that, that reminds you of? That prophetically, Jesus is speaking about this time in Acts that we read, and we've, we've covered uh, last summer. We went through the book of Acts, and you see the, the Saul 
who goes out and, and is killing disciple, disciples and believers because he thinks that's what God wants him to do. And so here Jesus is speaking very prophetically that, hey, you'll be uh, mistreated by religious people, disciples. You will be mistreated by religious people. And I think that hits home for many of us in this room who have been around church and we've seen things and we've felt things and we've felt hurts and scars from people in the name of God. And it's very difficult and challenging, but Jesus is warning us and he's telling us, hey, this will happen. Don't abandon the faith. But too often we see people abandon the faith because they're like, well, if the church is going to treat me this way, then I'm done with this. But Jesus is calling those people, hey, that's not the way I want it to happen. I'm sorry that happened. I've warned you, people are going to come in my name and do things and think they're doing right things, but it's not right. So how do we know? How do we have the discernment to know what is right and how to be treated right by people, uh, religious leaders? Well, Jesus gives us the Holy Spirit. He doesn't leave us alone. He says, look, this is going to happen, and I'm not going to leave you alone. I will give you somebody, even though I'm going away, like, Jesus, you just said you're going away. So what do you mean you're not going to leave us alone? What, what? This is so confusing. <laughs> Jesus is like, hold on, I'm teaching you. I'm going to go away, but it's a good thing I go away because I will give you my Holy Spirit who will fill you and who will guide you and who will comfort you and who is going to send you to do things for me. So <clears throat> I want to list off here uh, many of the works of the Holy Spirit that we see in chapters 14, 15, and 16, there's about 13 here that I just want to read, and I'm just paraphrasing them from the scriptures, but I just think it's good to, to read them out loud here and to see them. And so this is what Jesus promises and says about who the Holy Spirit is and what he's going to do for the disciples. So look at this list here, and I've got them listed out. It says that in verse, uh, that's the chapter number and verse number 14, 16, uh, the Holy Spirit will never, will never leave us, lead us, leave us. Sorry, he will lead us, definitely. He will never leave us. He leads us into all truth, 1417. He is God within us, 1420. Holy Spirit will teach us everything, chapter 1426. Holy Spirit will remind us of the teachings of Jesus. We need that, 1426. He, G, the Holy Spirit is a, a gift of peace. The Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth will testify about Jesus. The Holy Spirit gives us boldness to testify about Jesus. The Holy Spirit convicts the world of sin. The Holy Spirit speaks of God's righteousness. The Holy Spirit will prepare for God's judgment. The Holy Spirit will guide us into all truth. And the Holy Spirit tells us what Jesus is saying. So that's a list there. We could really get into all those and dive into them. But Looking at that list there, I kind of broke it down into three categories that you kind of see these three, uh, the works of the Holy Spirit. And the categories are this. The Holy Spirit is a companion. There's companionship. The Holy Spirit counsels. There's counseling. And the Holy Spirit commissions us, sends us out. And so I want to focus on these three things, of the, the works of the Holy Spirit. The companionship, counseling, and commissioning. And so Jesus' farewell discourse to his disciples, you can hear it. When we, when we read it, you can kind of hear the concern that the disciples have, right? Where they're concerned about what Jesus is saying to them, and they're trying to understand it. And what do you, you're going to leave us? What do, you, what do you mean you're going to leave us? I mean, that is hitting at the core desire of a human's heart, that we don't want to be left alone. And here Jesus is saying, I'm going to leave you guys. And he says that to us, and you can feel the, the fear and the grief in the disciples' heart and their words in John 16, where, what do you mean you're going to leave us? We don't, we don't want to be left alone. Many of us can think about stories and times when we've felt lonely and felt even abandoned, and it's a, a feeling we don't want. We don't really want to be left alone, even if you say, oh, I just want to be left alone. You don't really mean what you mean by that. There might be times you need to to step away from situations and seek counseling from the Holy Spirit. But really, we don't want to be all alone. That's something that uh, we don't want. We, we, ha I, we have a, a baby, a newborn baby, 
and he loves waking up, and we all run to him, and we put our faces in his face, and he smiles, and he's uh, so happy. Um, then if you leave him in the room for a little bit, you know, he'll start to make some noise and, hey, hey, I'm in here, guys. Or if he's sleeping and wakes up, he'll let you know he's awake because he wants to see you. He wants to have face-to-face interaction with you. As a ba- You see that in a baby. They don't want to be left alone. They want to have companionship. They want to be there. And so you see this word companionship that the Spirit has for us, this companionship. And so you, you really see the works of the Spirit all throughout Scripture, and also at the very, very beginning in Genesis chapters 1, 2, and 3, you can see the works of the Spirit, where it says at the very beginning, the Spirit was hovering over the waters, hovering and looking and, and wanting to create and wanting to take the chaos of the world and make something out of it. So you see the works of the Spirit from the very, very beginning. And I'll get to more of that here in a minute. But companionship. The Spirit will never leave you. That is a promise of Jesus. That is comforting, right? The Spirit will never leave you. He says the advocate is coming in in chapter 16, verse 7. If I leave, or when I leave, I will send you the advocate. And the word there is parakletos, para. You see that word para is to be called to one side. You see a para, like a paraprofessional in school, where it's called to one side to help and aid a student, uh, a, a paramedic who is called to one side to come and, and help. And so you see this word para, parakletos, the advocate is coming, who will be called to your side. And so Jesus doesn't leave them alone. He sends them someone that is called to their side so that wherever they go, they will be with God, and God will be with them. In Genesis 2, you see this where man was created, and it says that it was not good for man to be alone. And so God promised and said, I will make a helper who is just right for him. And so in the same way that man and woman, woman was created for man to be with them, in the same way, Jesus doesn't leave man alone, but he brings him a companion in the Holy Spirit to always be with us, called to our side. And then we see this as well in uh, Psalms 20. I'm going to reflect a little on Psalms 23 as well. In Psalm 23, you see this same heart of, of companionship. It says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will not be afraid. Why? For you are close beside me. closeness of God. You're close. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. That's a great verse there about the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's ministry to us, this companionship called to our side to be with us, to not leave us or forsake us. And so when we walk through these trials and sorrows, like we'll see in in John 16, 33, this key verse in this chapter, the trials and sorrows that Jesus promised, these valleys of shadow of death, we don't have to fear because God is with us. So he's a companion, the Holy Spirit. We also see that he's a counselor, that the Holy Spirit counsels us. And so counsel, the work of counseling, you see in chapter 16, verse 13, that he guides us into all truth. What a great counselor. Somebody who will guide us and teach us and show us things that we've been through and help us and listen to us as we talk to them we, we, we seek counseling when we don't understand something, and as we share and talk, that counselor, if they're good, they will hear and listen and be able to discern and give you back truth, what just happened. And it's one of those light bulb moments when it happens. <gasps> Thank you so much for saying that. I didn't realize that's what was happening, but by talking to you and you listening to me, I sought that counsel, and you led me into real truth. And so the Holy Spirit is a counselor guiding us into all truth. We also see this in Genesis 2 when God was leading them into truth. And he's saying, you may eat of any tree except the tree of knowledge of good and evil. God was wanting them to trust in his definition of truth, guiding them into truth, to trust them and let them know what is good and evil. But humanity didn't listen to that counsel. And they took it upon themselves to have this knowledge. But now the truth has been so twisted because of, of, of man's decision there. And so how can we get back to the, letting God counsel 
and guide us back into all truth and not be so twisted like we, we ha- that happened in the, in the garden there. And so how he does this is by the Spirit. The Holy Spirit guides us into all truth. Look at this verse in Galatians 5. Paul says this, So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Let the Holy Spirit, all right? Let it, let it happen. Let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. Let the Holy Spirit guide you into all truth. Then, reflecting on Psalm 23 as well, he renews my strength. He guides me along right paths, bringing honor to his name. Maybe some of us need a renewal of strength because we have been wrestling with things and counsel and we have sought counsel for certain things because we just can't seem to understand what's happening. We can't seem to understand what is the truth about this. What really is the truth? And we've been wrestling, and after all that wrestling, what happens is we get weak after wrestling for so long. You become really weak. And so he's saying, I want to renew that in you. I want to renew the strength in you. I want you to sit down, let the Holy Spirit work in your life, let the Holy Spirit counsel you. So he's a good companion. He's with us. He's by our side, giving us peace. The Holy Spirit gives us joy as a companion. What a joyful companion to have. Somebody that you just don't want to leave. You know those type of people in your life? You just feel like you could just be with them all the time. I have one like that named, named Kayla. I would just always want her with me by my side. And so she's a good companion and giving joy and peace. And then we have good counselors. I, I hope that you have somebody in your life that you can can talk to and trust. Um, there's many people that I've that the Lord has has put in my life who I've been able to talk to and to trust, and they they've shared with me through the Holy Spirit. Uh, find a, a spirit guided uh, counselor um, that will will help you and lead you into the truth of the situation that you find yourself in. I hope that we all have that. And and if you don't, there's a church here that you're a part of who I'm sure somebody would love to. Um, to, to help you and to listen to you and to share with you what they feel like the Spirit's leading them to share with you. That's why we're here, part of a church, because the Holy Spirit wants to work in each of our lives. The Holy Spirit is, a, is, a, uh, is, is in all of us as believers. There's just not one person that has the Holy Spirit, and oh, we must seek that one person in order to get the truth of the Holy We are all believers who are filled with the Holy Spirit, and that God wants to use all of us in unique, special ways. You have a voice. If you are filled with the Spirit, you have a voice. You know why you have a voice? Because you have the Holy Spirit speaking to you and speaking through you. It's not your words. It's the words of God speaking through you. And so you have a voice to share with somebody. So he's a good counselor who speaks to us and guides us into all truth, listening to the Father. The Spirit doesn't speak on his own. He is connected with the Father, with Jesus, three in one. And then lastly, the work here of the Holy Spirit is the commissioning, the sending out that he wants to do. Jesus says that you must also testify about me. You must also testify about me. Now, I'm not going to force you into, you have to go and do this now. I don't want to, I was told like that many times as a, as a youth, and it was scary, and I was scared because I was shy. Um, but the Lord finally was able to use me in a unique, special way where I was able to testify about Jesus without having to go on the street corner and, and you know, have a blowhorn, which could be good. I mean, I'm not against that, really, but I just felt like um, that wasn't for me. So, uh, but you must testify about Jesus in the way that he has you, in the places that he has you, to testify about him. And God will open up opportunities. We saw this is John 15. We saw this last week with uh, Ryan Pettis where he said that he had his, uh, a, a co-worker come to him and just say, hey, how, do you, how are you so peaceful? How are you so, jo- what is this? Everything's crazy around you. How are you so peaceful? 
And, you know, Ryan was able to share at that moment, well, it's the Lord is with me. That's why. And so God will give us ways to testify about him. He's, gonna, he's going to send us out in ways that are uh, for Jesus, to bring glory to him. And so reflecting back in Genesis 1, 2, and 3, we also see a sending out in that story, but it's in kind of a negative sending out where the, the, the two sinned, humanity sinned, and they were sent out of the garden and pushed out and saying, hey, you cannot be in this perfect place because um, there first must be atonement for the sins that you've committed, which is coming. Jesus promised that in the, in the garden, that there will be atonement for your sins. But for now, they got sent out of the garden to go and work. But Jesus, in the same way, at this reversal where he's sending us out, but now we've been atoned for. Our sins have been atoned for. We walk around as new creatures in Christ Jesus. And so he's sending us out into the world to bring redemption and reconciliation to those around us through the work of the Holy Spirit. And so it's a good sending out now where wherever we go, God's kingdom goes with us because the kingdom of God dwells within us. And so he's commissioning us all. But the Holy Spirit is sending us out into the world. And so in Psalm 23, 5, you see it says, My cup overflows. You prepare a feast for me in the presence of my enemies, in the presence of this crazy world full of trials and sorrows and people who want to try to trip me up and to make me abandon my faith, these enemies of the faith. You prepare a feast for me, good things for me. And you're preparing that, and you're sending me out into this world, and you honor me by anointing my head with oil, and my cup overflows with blessings, that you can be a blessing to even your enemies. And so he's sending us out into this place that can feel scary. But we shouldn't be scared because we are not left alone. So then you see... In verse uh, 2 Corinthians 5, Paul says it this way in 5.17. This means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. Thank you, Jesus. The old life is gone, a new life has begun. And all of this is a gift from God who brought us back to himself through Christ. And God has given me, given us this task of reconciling people to him. Us, not just me, that's my point us, all of us, to bring people back to Christ. For God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, no longer counting people's sins against them. And he gave us this wonderful message of reconciliation. So we are Christ's ambassadors. God is making his appeal through us. We speak for Christ when we plead, come back to God. For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering for our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ. And so now, since we've been made right with Christ through what Jesus did for us on the cross and filling us with his Holy Spirit, he'll send us out to testify and talk about this story in each of our own unique ways, how God has saved you. How has God worked in your life? How has God done something great in your life that you can share with other people in a unique way that God has for you? And you all know that. I think as I, even as I'm talking, your wheels are turning where you're, you're, you're thinking about things that you maybe have done in the past that the Lord's re- wanting you to return to. Hey, remember when you did this way? That was cool. That was cool. You should do that again. Oh, okay. Or, hey, uh, you, I know you've thought about this for a long time, that you could do this type of work in ministry. Why don't you do that? Okay. Now's the time. Now's the time. Many people are, uh, now's the time to be commissioned and sent out. And don't be afraid. He's with you wherever you go. All right? Just like in the book of Joshua. Joshua, you know, taking over this army of Israel. What a, what a task. Moses, the great Moses, just has gone. And now Joshua is in charge. Joshua 1. He says, hey, go and do this. Be strong and courageous. Be strong and courageous, for I am with you. Meditate on the word day and night. Know what it says, for then you will be prosperous and successful in all that you do. So whatever God is calling you to do, the Lord has given you his word to counsel you, to give you insight, to give you understanding of how to do it. Now all it takes is to to do it. All right? 
But, my, but maybe, uh, maybe you have been sent out and you've done some things and you've gotten beat up. You don't have to raise your hand, but you may have been there. Where God sent you out and did something, you're like, all right, this is great. And you saw some success. And then all of a sudden, the enemy's like, I don't like what you're doing. Smack. Oh. And you're like, oh, where am I? And you got beat up. Well, the Lord wants you to return to him as a companion. All right? Maybe it is a time for you to rest. Maybe there's some moments that you might need to just, okay, you did that work. Now rest in him. He's a companion. He's a counselor who's going to counsel you with what you just went through. Because some of the stuff we go through as Christians can be very trying and very tragic and very confusing. But God is with us, counseling us through that. He's like, all right, you went through that. Let me teach you what that was. Here's what it was. Okay, all right. Might take a couple months, okay. And then he's going to be like, all right, now go and do this. I'm going to commission you to do this now. So you can't always just have the Holy Spirit as a companion and just live in that way without having him counsel you or without having him send you out. The Holy Spirit does all three, okay? He's a companion. He's peaceful. He gives us comfort and joy. He counsels us through those situations. Some of us don't want the Holy Spirit to counsel us because it might be too hard. (sighs) Jesus, I don't want to bring that up again. I'm already past that. No, you're not. (laughs) Before I can send you out, you've got to You've got to receive this counseling. So sit down. Let's, let's work through this. We wrestle with that. But he's going to counsel us through it. And then when we're ready, when he's ready for us, he's going to commission us out. So I don't know where you are in those categories. Maybe you just need him to compa- as a companion right now, really focused on that. Maybe he counsels you through something. Or maybe you're just ready to be sent out and go. So the Spirit does these works in us. And just like in John 14, Jesus said, you will do even greater works than I. This is the greater works that he's talking about. Uh, Millions of his disciples around the world filled with himself, Jesus, doing the works of Jesus. How great is that? That is some great works there. This is what Jesus meant by greater works, that each of us have the Holy Spirit. Each of us have Jesus dwelling inside of us. This is great. This is why Jesus left because he couldn't just be in one place at all times right there as as himself in the flesh. He left, sent his Holy Spirit, and we do these great works now. So John 16, 33. Key verse here. I'm going to read this and and kind of close with this. John 16, 33. I have told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth, you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart because I have overcome the world. So this is actually a promise of Jesus, isn't it? He will have many trials and sorrows. He prepared us for this. But he also said, hey, trust in me. Take heart. Good. Be of good cheer. Be filled with joy. Rejoice always, as Paul says, it. rejoice always. Rejoice always, because I'm with you. And so companionship, counsel, commissioning. Companionship, he's God with us. Counseling, he's God teaches us. Holy Spirit commissions us. He's the one who sends us. God sends us. He's with us. He teaches us. He sends us. I'm thankful for the work of the Holy Spirit in my life. I'm thankful for all the many uh, moments where uh, I've been through all three of these, where the many moments where it's just, it's so nice having the Holy Spirit. We're just filled with joy and comfort in those moments when you're in a service like this. And there's just been many moments where the Lord's encountered me and it's just comfort, weeping, tears of joy. And he's, and he's emptying me out of things that I've been through. And, and he's such a peaceful companion, filling me with joy. And there's just been so many moments I can't even share them all because he's, it's just such a great work that the Holy Spirit does. And then the counseling. There's been many people, like I've said in my life, who have, who have taught me things and who have uh, taught me what just happened. And such a, a unique ministry of, of spirit-led counseling. 
where people have spoken prophetically in my life and have just really changed my course of my life for what God's done through somebody else. And, the, and God's used me in these ways as well. He's God used me in, in ways where I've been a, a help to somebody, a companion to somebody. And God's used me in counseling ways. And, and, and you know that how that feels when the, when the Spirit works through you in those ways. And it's so refreshing. And that's what we're lived for. That's why we're believers. We're not believers because we just, we believe in Jesus and what he's done for, the, for us on the cross. And we're going to sit back until we're gone. That's great, right? We're just going to sit back. No, we, we want to do things. We want to be active. We want to help. We have it inside of us where we want to be with people. We don't want to see other people left alone. We don't want to be left alone. We want the Holy Spirit to use us to go into people and to to be with them so that they're not alone. We want to do that. There's a desire for each of us to be charged in this way, led by the Holy Spirit to speak into people's lives. Commissioning. The Holy Spirit wants to send us, and we're on fire for that. We're We're all ready for that. But I want to first acknowledge the trials and sorrows. I don't want to act like those aren't real. Those are real. And so if you've been through any trials and sorrows, let's just pray right now. I want to pray for you. If you want to come and pray, the altars are open. You can pray where you are. If you need to move, you can. I get sometimes in moments like I get kind of antsy and I just got to get up. You can feel free to stand up if you need to. Feel free to walk around a little bit. I, I kind of get like a, a lion in a, in a cage where I start to kind of just pace back and forth. And have you ever seen a lion when they pace back and forth in the same spot and it just makes this, this pathway? And you see it with all the grass is dead because they're just pacing back and forth. Maybe some of you, the Lord wants to, to fill you where you're just pacing back and forth and, 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 and praying and interceding and, and, and being uh, filled by him so that he's going to send you out of that place. So feel free to come up here. Feel free to just pray right now. But I want to pray for anyone that's uh, feeling the trials and sorrows, feeling that, feeling that weight of all that, things that we've gone through in tragic situations. It just doesn't stop, does it? The trials and sorrows just don't stop. I mean, it just, they just keep piling and piling and piling on. But the Lord wants to, to comfort us through all those. And so I want to pray for that. And then I'm going to pray for us to be commissioned by the Holy Spirit, for the Holy Spirit to speak to us in ways that uh, will send us out to testify about Jesus. So trials and sorrows, Lord, we acknowledge the things in our life that are difficult. You didn't tell us to fake it till we make it. You're not telling us to do that. You're calling us to, to face those situations, to seek you, to seek your comfort that you give us. And so we're needing that. We're needing of your comfort. We are needy, and you know that. And you want to give us your Holy Spirit, so we receive it right now, the comfort, the parakletos, the one called to our side right now. to leave room for the Holy Spirit this week that you just have moments of silence just listening just feeling his presence just acknowledging him beside you if you need to in your prayer time this week (laughs) put an empty chair next to you (laughs) and just ask for the, the one to be called to your side Thank you, Lord, that you did not leave us alone, Jesus. You're with us. Putting your hands on our shoulders. 
letting us lean into you and weep. Knowing that it's difficult here. And you didn't want to leave your disciples alone because you knew it's going to be trying and, and hard. You didn't abandon us, Lord. We don't want to abandon you. Just like in this verse said, you told us these things so that we won't abandon your, abandon the faith. Lord, you didn't abandon us. You never left us. We don't want to do that. We don't want to leave you. We don't want to not listen to the Holy Spirit. Not dismiss the work of the Spirit in our lives. Teach us, Lord, right now, in the hard moments, in the trials, and start counsel us through those things, Jesus. Oh. Counsel us, Lord. Counsel us. Guide us into the truth. Guide us along the right paths. Your rod and your staff protect and comfort me. Thank you for that work. Now, Lord, we're ready to be sent out. The same spirit that has comforted us in the same way that we've been comforted. 2 Corinthians 1, the same way that we've been comforted, let us go and comfort others with that same comfort the same companionship of the Spirit, the same counseling of the Spirit, the same way we've received it. Let us go out and give it to others. Lord, call us right now. Call us out. This is a a, a place of sending. I remember praying. uh, Many people prophetically have prayed over this place and this building here before we were established in this building. We said that this would be a place of sending. This would be a place of, of, of... equipping, receiving, and sending out. We didn't want to come here. This was not our, uh, Pastor Jeff, Pastor Brian, when we were building this church, that was one thing we didn't want to happen is we didn't want to come here and and die (laughs) because we've been a church who have always been sent out and going to different places and different buildings. And many of you have uh, have, have been through all those trials and have been through different places and buildings and God has used each space around this area in such a unique way. But finally, we've been planted here. But one thing we felt like is God saying to us, yes, you're you're planted here, but you're going to grow and you're going to produce fruit that you're going to be able to take to the world. So we haven't been buried here. This is not a grave site. This location here is not a grave. We have not been buried here. We've been planted and growing and God's giving us and producing fruit in each of us to go out and to give to the world. So Lord, let this be a place where we get sent out one by one like a, like a carrier ship, like a big Navy carrier ship going out, fighter jets just going out <laughs> into all the world and not destroying enemies, but just loving people. So, Lord, we thank you for this place that you do that. This is a place we gather and go. Gather and go. And so, Lord, speak to each of us right now in the unique way that you do. You know us better than anybody in this room. You know the way that we've been wired because you wired us that way. You know the way that we speak and think. And so, Give us unique strategies, Lord, right now. Just ask him for unique strategies to testify about the goodness of God in your life. So, Lord, thank you for sending us out. Thank you, Lord.